All right, hey guys, it is your mind for name back from the YouTube video, and this is going to be another episode of SM Fortnite Reacts. And in today's video, we're going to be reacting to UFC professor Richard Quinn accuses class of cheating. Now, I have seen this like over the internet, like a, like a few years ago, about like this dude accusing his class of cheating. Obviously, it's a very old video. It has 14 million views. Uh, it is from. November 10th, uh, 2010, has 158k likes. So, yeah, like I said, pretty old video, uh, and yeah, we're gonna watch it. Uh, I haven't really watched the full video. Uh, I do see this in, my, in, like, my recommended a lot, but, like, I've never had the chance to click on it. So, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, and yeah. And by the way, this is probably gonna be a pretty long video. This is 15 minutes long, so just a fair warning. God, why is this intro so long? Dude, this intro does not need to be this long. There we go. Okay. We're going to get started. And uh, I know we had planned on going through and talking about... Also, another thing, this is going to be... This video is definitely low quality. It feels like I said it's from 2010, so it's not really going to be the best quality, so I do apologize. The uh, uh, chapter nine material today, talking about uh, mergers and acquisitions, alliances, and those kinds of things, uh, that's been preempted. And unfortunately, I think some of you know, uh, I've been here for 11 years. I spent 10 years before I came here at the Rochester Institute of Technology. So I've been doing this for the last 21 plus years. Uh, probably delivered course content to tens of thousands of students over those 21 years. And there was always one lecture that I hoped I never would have to give. And unfortunately, that hope ran out. Hold up. So you're a teacher, right? You're, you're a professor. Why, uh, why are you thinking about uh, not giving a lecture about cheating? Like, like... Like, what professor would think about that? Like, I think I, I'm sure if I was a teacher, which I don't, I don't have any plans to become a teacher in the near future. But like, say if I was a teacher, I wouldn't want to, uh, I wouldn't want to think about giving a lecture to, uh, to my class about cheating and like them cheating on a test. Like, that's not something I want to think about. Like, I probably wouldn't even like think about what even to say, but this dude right here, Richard Quinn is clearly thinking about that. So yeah. And has been thinking about it for like the 21 years he's been in the system. Would have to give. And unfortunately, that hope ran out. Because I'm going to give a lecture today that basically is the toughest one I've ever had to give. And for some of you, it's the toughest one you've ever had to hear. When the midterm exam ended on Friday a week ago, uh, I looked at this data from the midterm exam, and uh, at first I was just looking at the running statistics for the exam, and the exam was running about a grade and a half higher than it ever had run before. I thought that was rather interesting. Uh, it kind of set up a little bit of a red flag, because... It set up a red flag? I mean, okay, yeah, I guess I could see why, but, like, I don't know, he... <laughs> it's running at a grade and a half higher. Like it's a running statistic, so like, it's like that statistic may go down because running statistic means it's like currently happening. So like, that might have went down. Like, but I guess not because this is the title of the video: accuses class of cheating. With six hundred some odd students, and basically, a course has been taught fundamentally the same way for the last four or five years. Uh, you don't see that kind of a great improvement uh, by chance. Once the exam ended, I ran more uh, complete statistics on the exam. And what I came up with, or what, what came out of that, 
was something that looks like this. All right, and I'm comparing the summer 2010 capstone course, which I taught, to the fall 2010 capstone course. In summer 2010, this is the grade distribution. It's saw virtually a standard normal distribution around the mean. Uh, you'll notice that there's a single peak in the distribution. I can't really read this graph because the quality of this video is so shit. Like, I, I have no idea what this means at all. Like, I guess that is like the grade range or whatever. And that's the frequency. I mean, I know what a histogram looks like because I did take a statistics class. I did do, a, I am going to be a senior this year in high school, by the way, for those of you that don't know. But in my junior year last year, uh, I, uh, for my dual enrollment class, we have something called dual enrollment. It's basically where you take college classes at like a college around the area. So uh, at my, at the college I went to, I took a class called Intro to Statistics. Intro to statistics, and uh, we learned about histograms. And yes, this is a normal distribution, but I can't read what this means because, like, I I just the quality of this video is so bad. Like, oh man, now it's doing this glitch again. On the mean, uh, you'll notice that there's a single peak in the distribution, and that the tails of the distribution are relatively equal with the exception of the one student down at the bottom who basically scored a 60 out of 200, it's a relatively normal distribution. That's what it ought to look like. There are about 400 students in the course in the summer. This is the grade distribution from this semester, and I think you can notice, immediately notice the difference. This is what's called a bimodal distribution. Bimodal distributions exist. Oh, okay, I, I can kind of understand it now. So I guess this is out of like 200, and as you can see like on this end like it's like there's more grades like within like that like the reason why these bars increase is because there's more like grade ranges in here now because of the bimodal distribution and uh there's a lot like in the hundreds here and then like down there is like the 200s let's go i'm gonna go back a few seconds here so yeah that's like 60 out of 200 damn no one's ever and on this one and no one no one got a perfect grade there's no perfect grade on this one this this is the highest one no one scored a perfect grade on his test but then if you go back here there is a quite a few perfect grades uh it looks like that says i can't really read the bottom because the quality of this video is so shit but i guess i don't know i, I can't i can't make out what that says but yeah uh that's what <laughs> as you see there is a clear increase in here that there are more high grades in here than there was in the summer one so yeah oh jesus it look like there are about 400 students in the course in the summer this is the grade distribution from this semester and i think you can notice immediately notice the difference this is what's called a bimodal distribution Bimodal distributions exist when an external force has been applied to a data set that creates a systematic bias to the data set. Now, on Sunday when I ran this, I didn't know what the systematic bias was, but I knew that it was there. On Monday, I found out what it was. Oh, my God. Because a student, either through a guilty conscience or as a heads up, anonymously dropped this in the bin on my office door. This is, as some of you out there know, because some of you out there are also in possession of this, is the input complete test bank for the midterm exam. During the course of Monday, the lab instructors basically took a look at the data, started receiving emails from students who were concerned and upset that classmates had been bragging to them that they had advanced copies of the exam. And All right, I'm going to say two things here. Both the students and the teacher are at fault here in this. The teacher is at fault because you use a test bank that clearly is easy to access because if your students were able to access that, then they're able to then 
they were able to find that and use that for as their advantage. You 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 don't even make up your own questions. It's just like hold on a second. Okay, a call. Jesus. Not sure if you guys still hear me, but I'm trying to get my webcam back right now. Okay, there we go. Yeah, sorry, I just got a random call. This should be in, it is in Do Not Disturb. Okay, that's a little weird. But, uh, yeah, I have no idea what that was. I guess I was getting a call and I guess override a Do Not Disturb, so I apologize for that. But, uh, yeah, so back to what I was saying. Uh, the teacher is at fault because he's using a test bank that's clearly easy to access. But the students are also at fault because you're flexing to other students that will probably snitch on you saying, oh, I have the test bank and you don't. I'm not giving it to you. Ha ha ha. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Both, both sides in this are equally stupid. And to them that they had advanced copies of the exam and that they aced the exam because they had all the answers ahead of time. Guess what? The midterm exam grades are being tossed. Oh my God. Whatever you scored on the midterm exam no longer exists. So wait, wait, wait. If you did bad on this exam and you got like, I don't know, 20, you have another chance to get a, to get a better grade. But if you did really good on this exam, you, you got a perfect score without cheating. You actually, like, genuinely studied really hard for this exam, and you got a good grade because of that. You have to take it again, and the chances of you getting a perfect score again on the test with, like, new questions and all that without the, like, test bank, even though you didn't have access to the test bank, but you got a perfect grade, you the perfect, the score, I mean, the chances of you getting a perfect score on that is, like, very, it's not likely, because the second time you might not get a perfect score compared to the first time when you did, without using the test bank. So, I, so if you did really bad, you're in for a treat, because you can get a better score, but if you, if you didn't, if you did good, then you have a chance to not get a perfect score again. All because of, uh, your classmates screwing you over. Whatever you scored on the midterm exam no longer exists. Everybody in the capstone course is going to be required to retake a new midterm exam. And before I get into the specifics of that, I want to thank all of the lab instructors and all of the team for working virtually nonstop over the course of the last 96 hours to write a completely new exam with about 200 questions to choose from None of which, and I repeat, none of which come from a test bank. So I also have to say, why wouldn't you write your own questions to begin with? Like, why why are they coming from a test bank from like a publisher that's like easy to find? Like, any teacher would, any teacher that I know would not pull their questions from a test bank. Most of my teachers make up the questions. So like, why would you? That that's just you're just shooting yourself in the foot there on your own. Like that's not, that's not. Yeah, sure, the students' fault for like flexing that they have the text bank and came, like made it known. But also, like anyone could find that. Like you, you really taught this course for like the last twenty years, not thinking anyone would find your test bank eventually. Like, come on, dude, have some common sense. Like, think about what you're doing before you do it. I swear, this glitch is annoying me. I repeat, none of which come from a test bank. So whoever has the test bank for the midterm, it's worthless. And I'm presuming you also have a test bank for the final exam. It's also worthless. Because as soon as this exam is completed, the entire team is going to write a completely new final exam with zero questions coming from any test bank. Over the course of the past four or five days, your lab instructors, academic services, and the office of the dean 
have begun and are continuing a forensic analysis of not only all of the data, but all of the available traffic over all of the available environments that possibly could provide us with better information about where this started and how widespread it is. Let me tell you where we are right now. Right now, we've narrowed the, uh, the pool of uh, participants to about a third of the class. So when you get into your labs this week, just to give you some idea of the perspective of that, when you get into your labs this week, look at the person on your left side, look at the person on your right side. Statistically, one of them cheated on the exam. Now, we had two options. One was to basically just simply scrub all of the other activities through the rest of the semester, cancel the capstone competition. Uh, but that would have been unfair to the two-thirds of the class that was honest and ethical and tried and did it right. Um, but that's a good choice there. Like, I hate when teachers do that. Like, when, like, a, when, like, a class does that, like, like does something bad and then like the whole class gets affected by it. I mean, that's probably what's gonna happen in this video too, but like taking away all the fun events, like because your classmates decided to cheat on the test, like that's just, that's just not fair. Like it's it, I, like, I hate when like, oh, one kid did this. Oh, the whole class is affected by it now. Like I hate people. I, I hate teachers like that. Like not saying that I have that none of my teachers have done that, but like I, I've seen it before and it's not, it's not right. and did it right. Um, but I want to send a clear message to the ones who started this and the ones who propagated it and the ones who encouraged it over the course of the weeks leading up to the midterm exam. Uh, as I said to the associate dean for undergraduate studies when I met with him late last week, um, I could give him a list today and I could guarantee him with about a 95% certainty that everybody who cheated on the exam was on the list. What I couldn't do was give him a list and guarantee that everybody whose name was on the list cheated on the exam. That was going to require some further forensic analysis of the data. We expect to have that. What forensic analysis are you talking about? Like, how are you going to be able to find out, like, who, that you have 600 students in your class, right? Like, that's how much, like, like college classes have a lot of kids in classes. But like, how would you uh, how would you be able to find out who cheated and who didn't? Like, I guess you could see if like someone like is a does have g generally bad grades in your class, but this grade just spiked up. Like, I guess that is a kind of like a red flag. But like, what about the smart kids that like did good? And like, there's no way you're able to point fingers at who cheated on your test and who didn't. Like. There's just no possible way with like 600 kids in the class. Like that's not possible. Like I, I just, it just doesn't make sense. Like what this dude's talking about, because like, yes, there is probably a chance that people like, like the test bank was put on this dude's office uh, door. So like clearly people did cheat on the test, but like, how are you going to be able to figure out like how, uh, like, who cheated on a test and who didn't? Like, it's just, like, accused... It's just, like, pointing fingers at people. Like, what if someone actually did get on the test, but, like, you just accused them of cheating because, like, they don't usually get that high of a grade, but, like, they actually didn't cheat on the test. Like, there's no way you could suspect that. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, this for... Like, I honestly think this is just a scare tactic to, like, get people to, like, admit they cheated, even though, like, there's no way you could, like, conclude make the conclusion that, oh, this student cheated, but this student didn't. Like, there's no way you can conclude that. That was going to require some further forensic analysis of the data. We expect to have that forensic analysis of the data completed by the end of this week. At the end of this week, we will turn our findings over to academic affairs. And at that point in time, the options and the results and the conclusions are out of our hands. They will do what they need to do to protect the integrity of the university and to protect the integrity of the college. 
I don't want to be the one to have to explain to your parents why you aren't going to graduate. So I went back to the dean and I negotiated a deal with the dean. Unfortunately, the deal has a time limit, and the time limit runs out at 7 a.m. on Monday morning. I really want to hear this deal. This be because that's funny. when we're going to turn the data over to academic affairs, and at that point in time, they're going to take over and do their own investigation, and they're not happy. So here's the deal. If you participated in this, you have a, you have a choice. You can sit back in silence and hope your name doesn't get caught in the net, which is very quickly closing around the participants. Or you can individually, quietly, one by one, anonymously if you wish, to the rest of your classmates, identify yourself to your lab instructor. If you do that, get to complete the rest of the course. The grade you get in the course is the grade you earn in the course. And providing you complete a four-hour ethics course being offered by the folks over in academic affairs, any permanent record of this will be wiped from your transcripts. There'll be no further action taken. OK, so let me get this clear. The people that did cheat on the test, even though they were able to find the test being because this dumbass decides to use a test bank for his test from a publisher that people could easily find. Uh, you could either sit back in silence and pray that your name doesn't get caught in this dude's forensic analysis, which is probably not even accurate, to be honest with you. Or you could, uh, you could uh, go to this dude or uh, your lab instructor or whatever you want to tell and say, hey, I cheated on this test. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but I cheated and I need to be honest. Uh, and then and, and then uh, you have to take like a four hours ethics course uh, by, by academic affairs and this gets wiped from your transcript. And in uh, the grade you get is the grade you earn. Like, Honestly, this is just a scare tactic. Like, no one's gonna like. I mean, I bet people did. I get. I bet people did like admit they cheated, but like, it's just a scare tactic. Like, even if you, but like, what if you did cheat and like you you decide not to say anything and you and you don't get caught? Like, you just get away easily. Like, <laughs> it's stupid. Like, there's no way you can conclude that this student cheated, but this student didn't. Like, unless if like obviously like they get bad grades, but then like their grades spiked up on that then obviously yeah that's pretty obvious but like again like it's really hard to determine whether or not someone cheated on a test like there's no way unless you have like unless you actively seen them do it like there's no way, way like after the test you can suspect someone cheated transcripts there'll be no further action taken so the choice is yours. If you want to take a high-risk gamble, take it. I challenge you to take it. I like how he's like challenging his students to take his risk, even though like, they might not get caught. We know who you are. We know where you are. And when academic affairs is done, you'll know the outcome. And oh, by the way, for those of you who think that this is something that we caught by accident, college has informed every faculty member in the College of Business and every faculty member at the University of Central Florida that if they're using a publisher's test bank, that the test banks have been compromised. So if you've got a test bank from somebody else's textbook you think you're going to use, don't even dream of it. I've also been in contact with every single one of the major publishers who publishes his textbooks that are used by the College of Business. They're not only aware of it, but two of those publishers have turned the matter over to their legal staffs to pursue whatever legal action comes out of the Damn. investment. Damn, they're really going to sue people over this? Like, 
Okay, yeah, I get... But... All because of this dude, they're gonna sue people. Like, it's this dude's fault for using a test bank that is easy to access. Like, make your own questions. Write your damn own questions. Like, you, you're... This is just... This is just stupid. Like, it, use common sense, buddy. Investigation. The information's also been shared with the Academy of Management and every organization that deals across college campuses. And I met in Atlanta, Georgia with faculty from 20 universities and shared it with them. The days of being able to find a new way to cheat the system are over. The days of finding a new way to cheat the system are over. Man, wait until it gets until COVID year, into the pandemic when like school is online. You know how many people cheated uh, online? Like, not saying that I did, but like, you. there have been some, a lot of people that I know, I'm not going to name any names, but like a lot of people that I know have like cheated during the pandemic. Like a lot of people did. So <laughs> this dude was wrong in saying, the, the days of being able to find a new way to cheat the system are over. Yeah, you're wrong about that because wait until COVID comes. That is a whole new game. The system are over. They're over. Not just for this course but for this university. This kind of behavior will not, cannot be tolerated. You know who you are. To say I'm disappointed is beyond comprehension. Physically ill, absolutely disgusted, completely disillusioned, Trying to figure out what was the last 20 years for. Dude, this is the first time you caught people cheating on your test and you're acting like it's a waste of your 20 years. Like, grow the fuck up, will you? Like, yeah, I get I get you're devastated that people found a way to cheat on your test and like it just it just hurts you, which I get. But like, you're acting like this is like impacting your life forever and that like you're not gonna be able to like, rebound from this. Like it's just like, come on, dude, really? Like, it's not, it's not that deep. For those of you out there who acted ethically and acted honorably and did it right, you have my undying gratitude and my utmost respect. For those of you who took the shortcut, don't call me. Don't ask me to do anything for you ever. But this dude is completely in denial that this is his fault. Like, he, he he's denying it so much. Like, he's like, this isn't my fault at all. Like, he, he's in such denial because, like, it's his fault that this happened because the test bank. Like, <laughs> like you use a test bank that was pretty easy to find. Like, that's not... That's not the student's fault. Oh, it's your fault that you found the test bank. Like, it's it's your fault because you're the one that's using a test bank that's easy instead of writing your own damn questions. Like... Don't ask me to do anything for you ever. Again. The midterm exam makeup will open at 7 a.m. on Monday morning, November the 8th. It will close at midnight on November the 10th. It will be open for 51 hours. That's it. Those are the hours you get to take the makeup exam. I don't care what's on your schedule. I don't care what you have planned. If you have to give birth, you're going to give birth in the exam room. 
because it's going to have to take a signed, hand-delivered note from God. So, wait, 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 hold up a second. What if I, like, get shot? Or, like, I get into, like, a tragic accident? And I can't, like, walk or anything, or, like, I can't, like, do basic motor functions, and, like, I'm in a coma. Like, like, what, like, what's your excuse then? Oh, you have to take, you have to take this midterm exam unconscious. There's no makeup for this at all. Like, you, it's, like, I have to get a, it, screw your doctor, screw the hospital. You need God in this to, to get out of it. Like, like, dude, like, I'm literally in a damn coma. Like, I can't take your uh, makeup exam. He's like, if you have to give birth in the in, in the exam room, you're going to give birth in there. Like, come on, be a little realistic here. Like, if, if like, a tragic accident happens or, like, a family member dies or something, like, no one's going to want to take your damn midterm. Like, at that point, I would just take the zero because, like, a tragic accident happened or, like, my life is at risk. take a signed hand delivered note from God for you to get out of taking this midterm exam so adjust your schedules blow off whatever it is you have to blow off to be there but this is a one shot one time 7 a.m. on Monday to midnight on Wednesday if you miss it too bad I would have laughed so hard if he goes, if you miss it, too bad. So sad. I would have laughed so hard if he did that. I would have just broke all, this, all like the intensity of this video. It is mandatory for everybody. Even though she yep, and you can thank your teammates and your classmates and those that did participate for providing you with the opportunity. I like, so like we have this dude right here on the bottom. Statistically, he might have cheated on the exam. We don't know that, but st according to st according to statistics, he cheated. Ready to do this. I tell you how frustrating this has been. I didn't even have the wits about me in the last nine days or eight days to actually load the slides for the chapter nine presentations. So I literally have, unless I have it on my, on my keychain, I literally don't have the material available to me to be able to present it. Wow, he was that, uh... He was that devastated by this whole situation that he couldn't focus on his job. He had to focus on the fact that he's like devastated and depressed because people found a way to cheat the system. Unreal. I I have to see it. I'm going to do, I might do a follow up video on this uh, probably soon. I, I mean, this video is like half hour long, so I don't want to make it much longer than it has to be. But I'll, I'll do a follow up video on this. I'm going to do a part two to this video. Uh, just like a follow up to see like where this dude is at now and like what he's doing and all that so yeah so in my opinion i think this whole scandal was stupid uh he basically accused his class of cheating well someone had a test bank and they put it on his desk a test bank that was pretty easy to find uh on like the internet or wherever because you know we have the internet to find this stuff uh and he's not aware of that since this dude is at, like old school and shit and he's like He's like, the days of being able to cheat are over. But little does this dude know once the pandemic hits, that's all going to change. Um, his, for, his forensic analysis, which I have no idea how that's going to help the situation, is going to be able to detect who, uh, what students cheated on his exam and who was caught in the one-third net. And the makeup, which you cannot get out of, even if you, like, e even if you, like, get detected, decapitated you still have to take this exam even if like if you're like in your grave you still have to take it so all in all very good video uh very long one too this is like almost gonna be 35 minutes but i'm gonna try to do a quick outro here just so i don't have to keep you guys any longer so
I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, SM4 and Reacts video. Um, if you do want to see more, uh, make sure you like the video and subscribe to my channel. I do have a playlist on my channel for all this, uh, it, for all the episodes ranging back from 2021. So uh, you can go out and binge watch that playlist if you like. Uh, I will put a link to this video in the description just in case if you haven't seen it. You probably have because it's a pretty famous video on the internet. But if not, there will be a link to this in the description. Uh, if you guys do want to follow any of my social medias, I'll put my link tree in the description and there you'll find my discord server, which you can join. Uh, you'll get notified whenever I go live and whenever I go live on Twitch, my Twitch is in there as well. Uh, I don't really go on Twitch that much. I don't go live on Twitch that much. Uh, but if I do one day, then, uh, it's in there. My Instagram is also in there too. So is my Twitter, uh, also, my TikTok, if you do want to follow my TikTok. And, yeah, I think that's all I got to say. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.